the kids behaving differently online? You know, it's not so much that they're behaving differently as much as that we have a sense of visibility that we've never seen before. So we're used to being able to see a certain group of kids in certain places, right? The mall, we can see kids hanging out with their friends that way. But as adults, we don't typically have a really good sense of all the kids and a good sense of where they are and what they're doing when they're with their friends. What's going on online is, it, in many ways, it's youth space. Mm. So they're there, they're goofing around as though it, they're there just with their friends. Mm. And so what ends up happening is you can get a sense of what's going on really in broad sweeps. And it isn't just the kids like the kids in your community, mm. but the kids who are in different communities all around the world with all sorts of different ideas of what is normative behavior. Mm -hmm. right? And that what, what is normal, what is common really differs. And so, we see these behaviors online and we're like, oh my gosh, it's radically different today than it ever was before. It's not really. Well, it's... yeah, I, I was going to ask that actually. How different is it from like when I was a kid, I'd come to the mall and I'd do stuff at the mall or I'd go to the movie theater or whatever. Right. How different is it? Think about what happens when you were doing that with your friends, right? You were there, you were joking around, you were gossiping, you were flirting, you were kind of consuming culture and consuming merchandise. But it was part of this all-encompassing all social experience. The same thing is actually happening fully online. marginalized kids who were desperately seeking some sort of support um, you know and were often at loss um, you know out in more traditional senses of schools or whatnot finding a community online websites like blog TV were and still are wildly popular with kids with webcams and free time on their hands but there's also a dark backdrop to the glare of that webcam. There are many things to be worried about and things uh, that, to be worried about for children on the internet. There are um, sites for uh, chatting to strangers. There's anonymous messaging. There's um, uh, sites where you find pornography, uh, violence, sites where you can um, share and encourage uh, race hate and self-harm. Um, there are sites which come and go, which the children know about before us very often, and which escape regulatory oversight very easily. There was a growing online appetite and audience for girls who like to perform, like Amanda. I think this generation has a sense that information wants to be free and information about themselves wants to be free. People put their lives on the screen. They put really intimate details of their lives out there. And with very little thought that there might be people using that information in ways that are not uh, benign. This is no longer a generation that lives deliberately, that lives its life, that lives in the moment. Um, I think that, uh, that has time for reflection. We ask ourselves questions. If, you, if the velocity and volume is such that I send you a, a, a tweet or I send you a text, you have to answer me back. You can't, you, nobody answers a text by saying, you know, I have to think about that for two weeks. It, it, the, the communication demands a response. Well, that means that we start to ask each other questions that are easy to answer. And so I think we live in a kind of paradoxical time, and we're giving our teenagers a paradox, or the whole generation, not just our teenagers, but our babies growing up, a very paradoxical message. The world is more and more and more and more complex. On the other hand, we're only going to ask you a question that you can answer in, in, in two seconds. Um, so we leave ourselves less and less time for reflection uh, because our communications media uh, push us to quick responses. Most people are unaware of how exposed they've made themselves. Um, I mean, you talk to young people, for example, who've got their own personal blog sites or their presence on YouTube or Facebook, 
uh, and um, that they may come to regret doing some of the things they did uh, on video, on the internet, or saying the things that they did. But um, quite unaware, every single day that we do something digital, we are potentially leaving a trace out there, and that if somebody wanted to find out where we were shopping, what we were doing, who we were communicating with, uh, why we were doing it, what websites we uh, were logging on to, they could do it. Uh, it's, it's a very, very exposed set of media, these uh, uh, electronic communication devices that we now use. and private information, it's really a question of vulnerability. And so from an adult perspective, we're really concerned about physical vulnerabilities, um, and increasingly about psychological vulnerabilities. And for a lot of young people, it's about social vulnerabilities. So, you know, how do I make certain that I don't get teased, harassed, bullied, um, because of the things that I make available out there? How do I make certain that what I put out there makes me seem cool? And not, and not lame. How do I balance that? So the social vulnerability is the privacy fight for young people. Every exchange now leaves a trace. Messages and images can be re-edited to be funny or cruel. They can go viral, reaching um, many people very fast. They last forever. So, and one of the, perhaps one of the most difficult uh, ways is that everything nowadays can be shared and searched and found. And problems can escalate in a blink of an eye. Most of the media that we had previously, at least the technological media, were many to one or one to many. The BBC broadcast system, for example, is one to many. You've got one company broadcast content to tens of millions of users. But with the internet, you have millions of people creating their own content and millions of people consuming this content. And for the most part, they're communicating fairly directly with each other. Now, there are some virtual center points like Google and Facebook, but apart from that, the communications are basically uh, many to many uh, in an end to end network, and that makes it fundamentally difficult to censor. If I look now at how eight, nine, ten-year-olds use the web, it's completely different to how, you know, somebody aged 18 would use it, completely different how I would use it again. And I think that one of the issues around the privacy uh, questions that are now being raised are, have we taught children how to be safe online enough? And are we, you know, aware enough, if we come at this later with technology, of all the different ways that information is used. So there's definitely a piece of education that needs to underpin all of the developments that are happening in technology. So regardless of whether you think, you know, social technology and the internet is good or bad, it, it is. This is what, you know, the, 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 the genie is out of the bottle. And I think that's an amazing thing. The social web can do more good in the world than it can do bad. And it's the choice of people and the people who are using it as to what they want to do with it. It is the most empowering 
generational shift that has ever happened. And I think that that is what makes it so compelling and so inspiring and so much fun. Is this generation, are they gonna be all right? Are the kids gonna be doing okay? Or should we kids are all right. The kids are all right. No, I, I, I absolutely believe that the possibilities and the opportunities for people to live a rich, passionate life that allows them to express themselves in all the ways that they want to, regardless of where they live geographically. I don't think it gets any better than that. You can be sitting at your house in your, in your pajamas and you can actually impact the lives of someone sitting in a country hundreds of thousands of miles away. You can say, I'm here, I'm listening to you.